everyone. I'm Cynthia Butler, and I'm recording from First Baptist Jewett. And um, hopefully you've been able to join us for the last couple of lessons we've had. But if not, I'll get you caught up. We've been talking about Elijah. This is a painting to represent Elijah. Elijah was a prophet in the Old Testament of the Bible. And uh, we talked about a couple of his experiences. Actually, Elijah was a prophet in a time when it was pretty dangerous to be a prophet because there was a king named Ahab that was ruling and his queen Jezebel worshipped a different god. They didn't worship the true god whose name is Yahweh. Yahweh was the name that, that God gave himself. It basically means I am or Yahweh, he is, because God is all in all. He's everything. He's everywhere. He He's all powerful. So we call him I am. So Yahweh is the true God of Israel and the true God of the entire world. But unfortunately, in Israel at that time, there was another God that was being worshipped because Jezebel, the queen, uh, wanted to worship Baal. And so she and Ahab had led astray so many of the Israelites during his reign into worshiping Baal. And they even started killing the prophets of the true God, the prophets of Yahweh. They were killing them. Well, Elijah, he was one of the few that was not killed during this time and one of the few people who had stayed faithful to the true God. And so he was praying to God, and I'm sure very disturbed as to what was happening in his country at that time. And um, as he was praying to God, God called him to go talk to Ahab and say, there is not going to be rain for quite a while except by my word. So unless I say so, there will not be rain. And that was because the Israelites were so unfaithful to God at that time, and God was turning their hearts back to him. Sometimes it takes extreme things to turn our hearts back to God. What might God be doing in our nation right now that could turn our hearts back to God? We don't always know the reason why things happen in our country, even right now, not just in our country, but in the entire world. So many are affected by this virus that's been going around. But God can use this time to bring our hearts closer to him, make us realize that we have to be completely sold out to God and not distracted by other gods. Sometimes other gods come in the form of things that we spend our time in, things that we're, we're obsessed with, things that become more important to us than God himself, the true God. See, the gods that these people were worshiping, Asherah and Baal, they weren't real gods. They were just idols. Idols are just statues that people worship. But that kind of God has no power at all. That kind of God really isn't God at all. And the things that might tend to take your time up during the day or the things that you spend your money on, the things that fill your mind, they might be so prevalent in your life that that it's almost like you're worshiping them because you spend so much time with them. But let's all be aware of how we can give ourselves completely to the true God. So at this time in Israel, God was coming up with a plan to turn the hearts of the people back to God. But it started with a difficult time in Israel, and that was a time when there was no rain for quite a while. In fact, it had been three and a half years or so. And uh, just like you can see in this picture, um, you know, there was, there was a lot of devastation in the land. It was getting so arid, so dry, that the animals were dying, and the trees probably didn't have leaves, and it just, it was, it was devastating. So many people were having a difficult time. But at this time, three years or so after um, the drought had started, God told Elijah, hey, it's time to go back to Ahab, and it's time to tell him we're gonna, that God is going to send rain, okay? So Elijah went back to Ahab. That took some bravery because Ahab and Jezebel, remember they were killing the prophets, and they especially wanted to kill Elijah because in their mind, they felt like it was Elijah's fault that the drought was even happening in Israel. But it wasn't his fault, was it? It was the fault of the people that had turned away from God, the true God. So Elijah went back to Ahab. 
Um, while he was on his way, Ahab and Ahab's servant Obadiah went to look for some patches of green grass here or there because Ahab had a lot of um, horses, donkeys. He needed to find some grass for them or they were going to die. Now, Obadiah, even though he was serving this evil king, Obadiah was faithful to the Lord. He worshiped Yahweh and he wanted to protect the um, the the prophets of, of Yahweh. And so what he did was he took a lot of the prophets, actually a hundred of them, and he hid them in a couple of caves. So they had 50 in this cave, 50 in that cave. He was doing his part to help the prophets of God. But I'm sure that was unbeknownst to Ahab or Jezebel. That was his secret mission. But he was still serving the king. He was a servant of the king. So he was taking orders from the king. He was going out looking for grass. Ahab went this way. Obadiah went this way. They went their separate ways to look for grass for the, for the horses. And while Obadiah was on his way, he ran into Elijah. Uh, not literally, <laughs> but he saw him. They crossed paths, okay? And Elijah, and he, he was amazed. He said, is that really you? You know, the king's been looking for you everywhere. And, of course, I'm sure he knew why, why Elijah had been in hiding. Um, but Elijah said, go tell your master, meaning the king, that I'm here. Well, Obadiah was really nervous about that plan because he said, what if the spirit of God carries you off to this place or that place? And I've already told the king that you're here. And the king comes and he doesn't find you there then I'm going to get killed. The king's going to kill me because the king's been looking everywhere for you. He even went to neighboring countries and said, do you know where Elijah is? Do you know where Elijah is? And if they said, no, we don't know where he is, made them swear an oath that they didn't know to make sure they weren't hiding him somewhere. So the king was, was so determined to find Elijah. And uh, Obadiah was telling Elijah, you know, even though I serve the king, I'm on your side. I'm on God's side. I've been hiding the prophets to keep them protected, to keep them safe from the king and Jezebel. So please don't make me go do this. And then, you know, I, I might get killed by the king. But Elijah reassured him, hey, I'm, I'm going to appear before the king today as surely as the Lord lives is what he said. So for sure, I'm going to see the king today. So Obadiah did what Elijah had told him. He went and told the king that Elijah was there. Well, as you can imagine, Ahab, when he saw Elijah, he was upset. He said, is that you, you troubler of Israel? But Elijah said, I'm not bringing trouble to Israel. You're the one bringing trouble to Israel by introducing worship to Baal and Asherah and other gods other than, than the true God. And um, so he told Ahab, um, God is going to send rain, but here's what we need to do first. I want you to gather up all the prophets of Baal, like 450 prophets of Baal, gather up the prophets of Asherah, and we're going to meet on Mount Carmel. So uh, Ahab did it. He gathered up all these prophets, and there they were on Mount Carmel, and this was the plan that Elijah had, and I'm, I'm guessing this plan was from God in the first place. This was the plan. Elijah said, okay, you guys, prophets of Baal, you're going to take one cow, and I'm going to take another cow, and we're going to sacrifice these cows to our God. Now, just in case you didn't know, um, back then, and sometimes even now in um, other religions, other cultures, they make sacrifices to God that are animal sacrifices. So basically they kill the animal and they burn it as a sacrifice to their God. It depends on the religion as to how that's done. But um, that was also something that the worshipers of Yahweh, the true God, did to show their devotion to God. Today, we show our devotion to God in other ways. Because, see, Jesus was the final sacrifice. And Jesus allowed himself to die. So he was the final sacrifice, and we don't have to make those animal sacrifices anymore. Today, we sacrifice other things. We may 
give money to God. We may give our time to God. We may make sacrifices and, and give up certain things that we like to do just because we know these are not right for us to do. We, we make sacrifices. We say no to sin. We maybe spend our time doing the things that God has called us to do instead of the things we may really wish we could do. So these are sacrifices too, but back then they were sacrificing animals. And so Elijah said, you guys take uh, one cow, sacrifice it to your God. I'll take another cow, we'll cut it up, we'll put it on an altar. An altar was a place of worship where they would put their sacrifices and they would burn them um, on the altar. So um, in this case, the prophets of Baal, he said, you, you guys go first, make your altar, cut up the cow, put it on the wood, but don't set fire to the sacrifice. And when it's my turn, I'll put my sacrifice on the altar, but I won't set fire to my sacrifice either. Here's how we're going to find out who the true God is. The true God is going to send fire from heaven and consume the sacrifice without us ever having to, to set fire to the sacrifice. That's how we're going to know how the, who the true God is, whether it's Baal or whether it's Yahweh. So he said, you guys go first. Go ahead. So he let the prophets of Baal do whatever they were going to do. They prepared their sacrifice on their altar. They danced around and probably did some music, were praying. And this, ha this was going on for hours. Well, after a while, Elijah began to taunt them, which basically means to make fun of them. Hey, you guys shout a little louder. Your God must be busy. Maybe he's talking to somebody. Maybe he's asleep. Just shout a little louder. Maybe he'll hear you. But Elijah knew this God is not a true God. Nothing that they did could make this God hear them. But they became more desperate to make the God hear them in their prayers. And so they would even cut themselves, make themselves bleed. I mean, they were going to all sorts of measures to try to make this God hear them. But the God wasn't even real. He couldn't do anything about it. So they went on and on. Nothing happened. Finally, when it was time for the evening sacrifice, um, it was Elijah's turn. And he was the only prophet there representing God, Yahweh. So he set up his altar. He put 12 stones on the altar. And that was to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And so he put these 12 stones on the altar. He put the wood on the top. He put the sacrifice on the wood. But then he did something kind of strange. He told them, go get some water from the sea, you know, because uh, it must have been from the sea because it, there wasn't a lot of water anywhere else. But anyway, they went and got these four buckets of water, and he said, pour it all over the altar. So they poured it over the altar, uh, the people that were helping Elijah out, and the altar was wet. He said, do it again. So they got four more um, jars of water. They poured it all over the altar. He had dug a trench around the bottom of the um, altar, kind of like a moat, you know, like a moat around a castle. He dug a trench around it so that all the water started gathering down there in the trench, and he poured some water in the trench. He said, after the second time, he said, do it again. So they went and got four more jars. They did it again. Now, what did this do? This made the wood really wet. Now, if you've ever tried to set a fire with wood this wet, you're not going to have much luck. It's hard to set a fire on wood that's wet. Maybe impossible. On wood that's that wet, maybe impossible. But God can do the impossible. Hey, it was already impossible to, for God to send fire from heaven. I mean impossible by human standards. You, God can do anything he wants. doesn't matter if something's possible or impossible. God can do anything. So Elijah had them pour all this water over the altar, and he didn't do all this dancing around, cutting himself. He didn't have to do any of that. All he did was he, he stood there, and he just prayed to God. This is what he said. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. See, these were his ancestors. So he was praying to the God of his ancestors, the true God, the one that made himself known to his ancestors, the people of Israel. So he, he said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, 
let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. In other words, it wasn't Elijah's idea. The drought, the going to Mount Carmel, the calling fire down from heaven. It was God's word that Elijah was following, not his own ideas. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me that this people may know that you are Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back again. Because remember, from the very beginning, we're saying that's the purpose of this whole thing. God didn't send a drought because he wanted to torture the people of Israel. God sent a drought because he wanted to turn the hearts of the people back to him and make them realize what's really important. Make them realize that the God in heaven is the only God to worship. So Elijah just prayed the simple prayer. That's all he did. Guess what happened at that point? Fire came down from heaven and consumed the whole offering. In fact, it consumed not only the offering, it also consumed the wood. It consumed the stones. Can you imagine fire burning up stones just like that? It consumed all the soil around it, and it licked up all the water. I mean, this was some powerful fire. This was not your normal fire. This was fire from God himself, and it was so powerful. And everyone at that moment, they were just overwhelmed. They started saying, the Lord, he is God. Actually, that word, even though it's printed as Lord, when you see Lord in all caps in the Bible, it means Yahweh. Yahweh, he, he is God. Yahweh, he is God. They were overwhelmed, and they realized Baal is not God. Yahweh is God. And they, and just like he had said, God turned the hearts of the people back to the one true God. And uh, so then Elijah said, take all these prophets of Baal and kill them because they were unfaithful and they were turning the hearts of the people away from God. So they did. These prophets were put to death. And then he said to Ahab the king, God is about to send rain. You can go ahead and have a meal now because I don't think they'd been eating all morning. They'd been maybe fasting through the day. But he said, God is about to answer your prayer. So, or I don't even think that Ahab was praying. God is about to answer the prayer of a lot of people though. And so he said, go ahead and have your meal. But Elijah didn't go and have a meal. He went to the mountain and he started praying. Now, Elijah had a servant with him, and even after God had answered this prayer, this amazing prayer to send fire, um, Elijah had to, he had to pray, (laughs) he had to pray again and again for this one, and I'll tell you about it. So Elijah knew what God's plan was. God had revealed it to him. Now it's time for rain. So he went up on this mountain. He started praying. He, He put his head in, like, between his knees and he just prayed and he said to his servant go look out there over the sea and see if you see anything so the servant went out there not one cloud to be seen so he came back and told Elijah there's nothing no clouds so Elijah prays again he puts his head down he prays to God he's praying God to send rain because that's what God has said he's going to do and so he says to his servant go check again See if there's a cloud. Nothing. There's no cloud. What's God up to? So Elijah prays again. He puts his head down. He prays to God, please send rain. Then he tells his servant, go check again. There's still no clouds. Why isn't God answering his prayer? Wasn't it God's plan in the first place? Listen, Elijah did this seven times. Seven times he prayed to God for rain. And on the seventh, He told his servant, go check again. And his servant said, hey, there's a little bitty cloud about the size of a man's hand coming up from the sea. Hey, that's all Elijah needed. He knew God was beginning to answer that prayer. And so he he said to his servant, go tell Ahab, he better hitch up his chariot. He better get out of here because we're going to have some heavy rain. You better get on back home. So, uh, So his servant did that. He told Ahab. Rain is coming. Get on your chariot. Head back home. And then Elijah 
was given power by God to run ahead of his chariot. I mean, he was running for, I think it was like 17 miles. Yeah, 17 miles. Elijah was running ahead of the chariot. He was even faster than the chariot. The chariot, by the way, I mean, they didn't have cars back then, as you know. So they would have horses connected to um, a vehicle with wheels, and that's what would carry them. So this is Ahab riding in his chariot. This is Elijah running ahead of him. Let's just think about this situation um, for right now. Last week, we talked about another situation where Elijah, he prayed and nothing happened. And then he prayed again and nothing happened. And it was the third time that he prayed that he saw results. Um, This time, he prayed seven times. And it wasn't until the seventh time that he saw God begin to answer his prayer. Sometimes God answers your prayer right away. Like what happened when when Elijah prayed in front of all those prophets of Baal, when he was praying to Yahweh to send fire. I mean, fire came down just like that. He didn't have to pray and pray and pray and pray. Sometimes God answers your prayer right away. But sometimes you got to keep on praying. Keep on praying. Never give up. I know we've been talking about that, but it, it, it's worth saying again. I need to say it to myself. Don't give up on God. You know, keep praying. If something you feel like this is God's will, it really needs to happen, then don't give up. Keep praying. So we need to remember that. At a time like, like we're going through right now, don't give up. Keep praying keep trusting in God, keep knowing that God has a plan, you know, even if things look bleak, even if, even if it looks like this, right, pretty bleak, even if things look bad, don't give up, God has a plan, and he's going to accomplish his plan, just stay faithful to him, hey, maybe you're going to be in a situation where people around you don't agree with you, maybe you're going to be in a situation where Nobody agrees that we need to be faithful to God. You can be faithful to God because even if you're the only one, you're really not alone because God is on your side. And the Bible says in Romans, if God is for us, who can be against us? That goes for the devil too. Even if the devil tries to come against us, if God is for us, we have him on our side, then we have all the strength we need. The one who is in you, if you're a Christian, is greater than the one who's in the world, whether that be the devil trying to tempt you or discourage you or even destroy you. The one who is in you, meaning the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is more powerful than the one who's in the world. So don't give up and don't be discouraged. Keep doing what you know you need to do. Stay faithful to God. God has a plan. He's going to work it out.